God morning. Today is the 22nd, I believe. I uh, just took my mom and dad to the airport in Memphis to fly out to Carlsbad, New Mexico. Uh, my dad is preaching uh, anniversary service at the church he used to pastor there. I wish I could go with them. See my my dearest and best of friend Jimmy Westfall. Hey Jim. Wish I could have come seen you, man. <clears throat> Been a long time. I believe the last time I saw Jimmy was uh, 2000. I went to New Mexico. I knew 2004. Right as I was moving to Florida. I um, left Chicago, left the music industry, went to Florida, and um, I bought a, a brand new Tahoe. Brand new Tahoe from one of my cousins um, out there in Carlsbad. And um, I come out there to visit. I hadn't been out there since I had uh, left back in 94. So it had been quite a while. I wish I could go back and, and uh, take my wife and let her see uh, Carlsbad and meet all my cousins that are out there and meet my friends that are out there. I'll be out there again soon. I made a post this morning. I've, I've spoken of this uh, several times <clears throat> in the last couple months since my eyes were open to it. Uh, we know the scripture in Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, but when we think about wait upon that Lord, uh, wait upon the Lord, I always use the word wait as a server. You know, like a wait to wait, uh, uh, a waitress or a waiter serving that's what I always used it for you know we always read stuff in the King James Version and um, naturally our, we interpret it define things with our mind but I just want to invite you guys um, into something a little bit deeper a lot of folks uh, may watch my show and um, you know, they're, they've never gone to church, never never would want to, you know, but here I am, you know, David Carson, talking about the Bible. So you're listening and, and um, you're getting part of what church people get uh, due to, um, you know, being able to put up with it because of me. <clears throat> I want to show you something about the Bible, which is really cool. So King James Version is the oldest English translation, um, the first English translation of the Bible. And if you go to what I, it's called a Strong's Concordance. Strong's, like strong. Strong's Concordance, exhaustive concordance. And they have an app uh, you can put on your phone now. I, I have, when I come back, I told Dad as the first thing I wanted. I said, Dad, I need a strong concordance. I'm I'm uh, brain damaged uh, enough that nobody really can. Even if, if even if you've got this, uh, you'll forget about it, and you'll forget that I'm, I I deal with this. But I don't know what era I'm in. A lot of times, it takes me uh, several things to click before I know, you know, where I'm at. I feel like I'm 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. Um, and I'm, um, I'm, I feel like that in my head. Um, I feel, sometimes I feel I'm in the 90s. Sometimes I feel like I'm in, in you know, it, the whole era of time that I'm in, um, it's never stable. It's never the same. It's always, I'm always... Um, coming in and out, you know, I've lived a really, really amazing life, folks, 
don't really have an opportunity to, to understand what I dealt with all my life with dementia and the, the head injuries that I've, I've uh, that's caused this in my life. The head injuries that's caused the, this type of uh, life that I've had to live. Anyway, as I'm, see how I got lost into that description for 10 minutes? <laughs> All I'm trying to get to you is there's a strong concordance. I had my dad buy it for me and got me as right away. Gave me this big, it looks like a Webster's Dictionary, if anyone remembers what those look like. And every word that's written in the Old Testament of the King James Version Bible is in Hebrew. Okay, that comes from Hebrew. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. They translated it uh, into English. And um, the New Testament was written original text in Greek. And that's also translated into English in the King James Version. But what you can do is if you read the Bible and you really want to get something out of it. I'll tell you a little. Um, the Bible, it, Dad told me this right away. I tell this to every person I minister to when they... When they ask the very first thing I say to them about what they need to do for any deliverance, any healing, any recovery, any of that stuff, is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, so putting the word of God and seeking God and his faith, seeking him in everything, uh, bring, brings everything contentment everything you need or everything you need everything that that uh, you're missing in your life if you'll seek God first make that your number one priority then all this other stuff that you you know you you think you need or you're stressed out about or you're missing it'll be added to you and I can guarantee you that it's not my word it's God's word and I can guarantee you God's word he, he, he doesn't mess around. This ain't no... Uh, I, I prefer um, those who've had this relationship that's shaky, whether God's going to do what he says he's going to do, or you're playing this. Um, God's in a box, you know, as big as you allow him to be. That's how big God is. Uh, I prefer for you to have your box dissolved and then come, come hang out with me and, and my God because he's huge he's massive he's big he does what he says he's going to do so that being said here's one of the ways you can seek God and be different than everyone else you want to be peculiar and stand out don't just read what you and then define what translate it and interpret it all in your own you know read read scriptures yes reading scriptures is good but seeking him Here's, here's one of the bonuses. When you seek the uh, original text in Hebrew, and Isaiah 40, the word wait, they that wait upon the Lord, that word wait in Hebrew meant to um, intertwine or, or, or bring together, like, like, like tangled together with see how that's totally different and it makes me um, it makes sense in the in, in how my life and how I'm intertangled I'm, I'm, I, if it wasn't for God my story I would be dead if it wasn't for God none of it makes sense if it wasn't for the intertangled uh, wrapped up um, relationship that I have with the Father, I wouldn't be able to communicate with you. Um, I would be suicidal. I would be messed up on drugs and alcohol. Um, I wouldn't be able to communicate. You'd think I was messed up on drugs and alcohol. I would be slurring. I would be stuttering. I, I couldn't keep my focus. You know, all these things that people do not see uh, due to 
the intertangled, the intertwined, the wrapped up with God thing that I have going, um, and the power of God in, in my weakness this is what it's saying to me. Any the weight, those are intertwined or intertangled with God, like a vine wrapped around a fence post, or like the picture on my Facebook post this morning of that tree that has no root system, but the 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 big tree next to it has it's grown into it and and it's holding that tree up. That's what it's like to be with. God, God, I mean, I was really, 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 I'm not, uh, uh, it's hard for me to talk about how smart I was and not feel weird, but when I was young, I, I was one of the 50th smartest kids, have the best school record in, in the United States one of the 50 top students in all of the United States in 1991. And God chose to have a, a mind like that, a brain that was this intelligent. They could have, with, with the brain that I had, I could have done anything. I had a full ride scholarship that was scholastic. It wasn't athletic, it was it was for my brain um, and was in a military institute uh, for college and was studying medicine. I could have done anything, but God chose to allow uh, me to have these head injuries. A total wipe of my memory as I'm going to college as I'm all excited to have a scholarship to be able to go to medical school, paid for, signed by the Senate, I have another head injury. Not the one I'm calling at 15, now I'm 17 and I'm headed to college. I'm headed to basic training and I take a trip through Mississippi, where I'm living at now. and. Rage from the previous head injuries had changed my life. And now my personality and my character was, I was kind of like my brother. My brother had a rage temper. I mean, he popped you, got kicked out of every basketball game. He had a temper. I didn't. But after I got jumped um, and uh, in, at 15 and got concussed and then many concussions after that for the next year and a half, playing football and getting in fights. Um, my character changed. I was punching brick walls and, I mean, just going nuts. Well, I went nuts and headbutted my best of friends. Um, I headbutted him over and over and over and over and over in the back of his head, the hardest part of your, your body, your occipital bone. Um, and I headbutted it until I lost all my memory. Amnesia, full-blown amnesia. God allowed a brain that was one of the top brains in the U.S., you know, possibly the world, and he allowed it to get damaged. Why? Look at this. I'm intertwined with God because of my weakness. I'm, I'm testifying for God. I'm speaking for the Lord. I'm delivering hope and inspiration from God and how does he do that he takes my brain and lets he allows it to be damaged where it's weak it isn't strong it isn't the most intelligent brain it's handicapped it's disabled it's broken it's hurt it's inflamed it's dying. A CTE brain is dying just like an Alzheimer's brain is dying. And he chose that to minister to. 
because of this scripture, Isaiah 40, I believe what it's saying is that in my weakness, in my brokenness, like in that picture, it's like that tree's cut at the bottom. There's no roots. There's nothing. It, it, and it's, but it's growing right up next to this big tree. And it's getting its strength. It's, it's standing and budding leaves and growing branches all due to the tree that it's connected to, intertwined with. <clears throat> and now I just want to share that. I've been sharing it over and over. I made a little TikTok video with um, Brother Lee Stone King um, reading this scripture and describing this uh, this little reveal uh, <clears throat> on my TikTok several months back. It's a powerful, uh, powerful book, the Bible. Uh, the devil, the enemy, the world, the, the opposite of God <clears throat> knows how powerful this word is and doesn't want you to read it doesn't want you to know it is real. It wants you to uh, look at uh, religious folks that misrepresent the book and wants them to turn you away from it. Um, there is a special place of, of, of torture and pain that's coming to those who who have ran folks away from the Word of God. They, they, the Word of God describes that it would be better if you weren't even born. Those of you who do this. And I'll tell you something, there's full, full lawn churches that are set up and used by the devil to turn folks away from Christianity, turn folks away from the... the uh, the Bible and they think they're all um, every one of them are right and, and doing good in God's eyes that you know most folks don't do the wrong thing knowing they're doing the wrong thing unless you know I, there's some really good bad folks I'd rather be with a really good bad man than a, than a bad good man a, a really good bad man knows he's doing bad that's what I call a really good bad man a man that knows he's doing it will say he knows he's doing it, will not lie to himself about it. He's honest. That's a really good bad man. I've been locked up with, um, last year when I was in the, in the jail for that warrant I had to go take care of in Florida, I was in, in, um, in a, what should have been a two-man pod, it was a three-man pod, and one of them was a really good bad man. The other one was a really bad good man. And um, I'd pick a really, a really good bad man any day. And I said all this because I feel obligated to share my life, all my life. I didn't, like in my 20s and 30s, I didn't share my thoughts, my beliefs, my experiences in anything but song. And I went from being a youth pastor and a minister to a rock star and I went from sharing and preaching to to put not only in, in, in uh, lyrical form, uh, very cryptic messages. And um, I was obeying the voice of God. Uh, I had a lot of, I catch a lot of flack from folks who try to tell me what God did and what God didn't say to me. Um, and that's okay, people have their opinions, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't change the truth. The truth is I'm here today my mind is fractured the way it is. I mean, literally fractured my skull in several places in 08. Um, and I'm left crippled. 
when I was previously already living a completely crippled life and no one could, no one knew it. Even after my head-on collision, um, when when I come to completely different, all of a sudden a successful business I had, I was a successful person. I had proven I wasn't drugging and alcohol and, and people just didn't pay attention to that. I was brain damaged and sounded drugging and alcohol and um, so I got, that's what I was doing in everyone's mind. So what people's truths are, aren't the full truth. And that's why I'm here doing what I'm doing today. And um, that's why God has used every bit of my life. Because the truth is, I'm the one that knew the truth. I didn't try sharing it with anyone. I kept it to myself. And I allowed my life to, to play out like it was meant to. I wrote about it, prophesied about it, had dreams and visions about it, um, and then after 08, a, a desert. I stopped writing, I stopped uh, singing, I stopped sharing, I stopped dreaming. I had no idea by 2019 who I was, what I was here for. God allowed all that to happen to a brain that was one of the smartest in all of the United States. For what? So that I wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint oh i'm so happy to know god i'm so happy to know that the word of god is real i'm so happy to know that I, the experiences i have were given to me by the father the the the, the father had to give permission for those demons and those men to jump me pull a knife on me. The Father gave me the ability to, to face the devil head on and come out standing on his feet. God, God carries me. That, that picture of that tree, that's me. And you can't see it. You've never been able to see it. What I've been is misjudged and, and, and misdiagnosed. All the while the Father's taking care of me. All the while he, his plan is to gather all this evidence. Evidence is faith, y'all. Faith and evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things unseen. We got evidence and substance of, of what brain damage has done, not only to my life, but to thousands and thousands and thousands of vets and professional athletes. And, and we've got a, we, we, the, the only cure for CTE, Alzheimer's, dementia, is this scripture. Is the God that wrote these words and inspired men to write this stuff down. Those who are intertwined with God shall renew their strength. Look at me, I'm 48 years old. Go back four years in my Facebook and look at the strength that did not ha exist in my life. I was suicidal in the in the, in the worst of, 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 uh, of conditions. I mean, folks, I committed suicide in 2019 or 2018, the last time, and my parents came to the rescue in Denver, Colorado. Through, met her for the first time, come to the rescue. God sent them both. Now, I had committed suicide 
at least a dozen times over that last year, and no one knew about it. There were two Christmases that I woke up in a hospital after three or four days of being in a coma, unconscious, from a suicide, and no one knew about it. On two Christmases. This was also a Christmas. This last one where Mom and, and Fru come and met. Look at what God did, folks. This, this evidence that I've got in my life comes with a, a disease that is now getting publicized due to the NFL and um, the suicides that are happening. It's bringing this disease into the light. Um, and <clears throat> now we've got the vets. There's a reason why they're killing themselves left and right. There's a reason why there's more deaths. And every hour a vet takes their life. There's a reason why that the number one killer in America is through brain damage. I was just reading this, this statistics of what's happening in our society and what God allowed me to go through so that I could minister in this, in this ministry that I, as I've been called to be in. It's, it's one that... I, I have not got the power to do. It's one that I can't complete the task without God. I totally depend on God. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I really wouldn't. I, I get aggravated and frustrated at, um, at folks so easily um, because of how much I depend on God, how much He's capable of doing it, and how much people don't let go and let God have because they don't have to. It's, it's, it's within their own power to take care of something themselves so therefore they do it. I'd like to invite you today whether you <clears throat> are watching me because of CTE whether you're watching me because of uh, a religious reason or a musical reason, <clears throat> or you're just curious of what I'm speaking about today. I'd like to invite you to, to uh, you've heard of neuroplasticity, learning to new new things, creating new pathways in your brain. I'm inviting you to have a mindset change. I'm inviting you to what the Bible calls repent. It means change your mind. I'm inviting you to change your mind. Even if you believe in God. Even if you have been in church all your life and are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm inviting you today to, to change your mind. Change your mind. Repent for how little we seek God. He's in, he, he is so mighty and powerful that it's just a simple seeking of that word. Find out what the Hebrew word was, the original one, and watch God, boom, hit you with something powerful. By doing this, what I'm really truly inviting into your life, if you'll change your mind and experience this God that I have the way that I experience Him, it's going to change. You're going to repent. There's things that are going to stop. Your mouth's going to quit saying certain things. Your eyes are going to quit watching certain things. Your ears are going to quit hearing certain things. And what will happen is you'll start to see the same thing that you were seeing all this time that you not aren't seeing, but you're seeing it differently. You see through God's eyes. You see, you'll hear through God's ears instead of concluding Folks, we conclude on, on junk, on lies, stuff that's not true. We, we walk outside of truth way too often. And what I'm offering you today is a truth that most none of you have seen. 
And that's the amount of God it takes to you, for you to experience this video. For you to experience hearing me speak. I'm, I'm not only speaking a message from God to you. I'm driving down an interstate. Back from Memphis, Tennessee, in a place where I've lived only a year or so, made maybe a dozen or so trips back and forth, and no GPS. Um, it's a miracle, and God is a miracle working God. He doesn't, He's not a part time God. Um, you know, to, to hear me be doing well and then see me collapse in a sense of rage or uh, what my symptoms show up and and freak people out that's not God you know taking a break that's not David uh, not being prayed up it's opportunity God's given for you to see his power for you in my weakness he's made strong that's what I believe the scripture is speaking so clearly to me It'll, they don't wait upon the Lord those who are intertwined with God is, is when in my weakness is, is where his my brain doesn't function properly it's it's if, if we got a captured visual of it, if, if we could dissect it and pull it apart without me dying, you would have the CTE brain from all the damage and it deteriorated. It's dying. So what am I using? God. It's intertwined with him. And that's the God I serve. That's the God, if you serve the God of the Holy Bible, Jesus Christ, then this is the God you serve. He's this big. Make your little bitty problems you're stressed out about look like nothing. I wish that I could. I wish, you know, I, I was speaking about having a hole in my head and if I could just, if you could just see what damage that I'm working with and how much God it takes to have me do the things I do, then it would change your life and you would. It would turn non-believers into believers. And I kept speaking this and speaking it and then Shell Miller pops up in my life with a big hole in her head. Knows the Bible. I mean, it is a God thing that she showed up in my life. Then comes and stays with us two months. A God thing. I have all these interviews of her sharing her story. It's a God thing. I've not been able to edit it and get it released to the world right now. God thing. He's bigger than us. He's bigger than your problems. He's real. My daughter is... is um, a, She's my daughter. She she was raised by me, her mother. We both are Pentecostal preachers' kids who uh, couldn't stand religion and and went through some really uh, difficult things for uh, kids to deal with, um, and still have a relationship with the church itself. And I, I raised my daughter and my son in this sense. I didn't force them to go to church. I didn't teach them my, my opinions and my beliefs and my revelations. I did something different. God brought me into where I've come, the way I was raised. And he's a mighty, powerful, and he can do anything. And I wanted him to prove himself, not only to me, he had to. After all I'd gone through, after everything I'd suffered, and all I'd experienced in religion, 
he had to do something. You couldn't speak to me, pray for me. Not, you could, but it wouldn't, wouldn't end well for you. God changed. God did that. Now, for my daughter and my son, that's all I did was give them to God. I dedicated them to God. I, my, my dad um, did the baby dedications for both of my children. And then I left it to God to make himself known to them. I wasn't available. Due to God's plan for me, I have no fear in knowing that God will get my children through everything they go through. <clears throat> Never stepping foot in the church. Never being part of organized religion. And God will do what He says He's going to do for my children. He already he, he already is. Every bit of the, the trauma that they've had to go through um, due to my life I'm their dad. They went through all this stuff with me. God's proven himself to them. There's a relationship that comes from God and from trouble that, you know, ones that grew up in, in comfort of their church just don't have the relationship that I or my children have with God. I'm so blessed to share this uh this story with you guys. I'm so blessed to have a desire to to share it with you. You know that's amazing. I know I, I went through. Hang on, just a second. I went through my whole. I'm, I'm hearing this GPS talk in my ear. It's not supposed to be on. I don't. I didn't use it for any of this trip, and I just keep hearing this woman talking in my ear of this street and that street. I'm not paying it any attention. It's amazing it hadn't side sidetracked me. What do I call it? Train wrecked me. Um, and made me lose my thought. See, uh, so what God does is He knows all. He's in all. He's through all. I mean... If you believe in God and He's an almighty God, omnipotent, um, then everywhere, all things, you know, no, faith, no fear, faith. Uh, there's an enemy and it's the opposite of, of faith, fear, but it's the same. Faith is just evidence of a true God. Uh, it shows in, in one's life when Abraham followed what the voice of God told him to do, that was due to faith. He had an experience. He had a meeting with the one true God and when he spoke to him, you do what that one true God says. It sticks with you forever. You don't care about what anyone thinks. And that's what my life was like. I was ridiculed. I was told I was deceived. I was stoned. All the way when I come back and I was the prodigal. Uh, you're the prodigal. I'm like, I'm not really the prodigal. But it took me a minute to learn. You know, I swallowed this because the prodigal is a story fulfilled in the Bible. And I'm going to let this story fulfill itself as I return. And, and... To know that I obeyed God, to know that I had no idea how I was going to do certain things that I saw in dreams, it's fulfillment of word when you know something and you do it. Joseph took Mary and, and baby Jesus to Egypt to fulfill the word of God. It says it right in the Bible. Jesus did things over and over to what fulfill the word of God. That's 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 serious. And I'm talking about a book that's so full of power that if you will get into it, if you'll give it 
moments of your time and seek it. You will find the very situations that you're in in your life. You'll find them in that Bible. And if you seek it, it'll direct your path and put you right. And you talk about an awesome feeling. Knowing that you're fulfilling the word of God. In, in, in everyday situations that you're dealing with, that you're stressed out about, that you're hurt over, that you're worried and, and, and can't get out of your mind. You seek God and He'll show you in His Word and you fulfill. You fulfill your end of the deal and God comes in and fulfills His. It's a covenant. It's a promise. It's, it's something that He gave us from the very beginning. And on this earth, in this reality, it is the, the, the job of the enemy to deceive you, to make you not experience it in fullness. And you can go to church all your life and not have what I'm talking about. Matter of fact, you can go to church all your life and most likely not have what I'm talking about. It took a, a, a two decades of the worst hell you could ever imagine me living in to have the experiences I have to obtain the faith that I've got to get to where I'm at right now the head injuries that I had to obtain the amount of fear that I had to walk through the unknown where I'm lost and demented the amount of, of poison that I drank and shot into my veins fearless knowing God it's going to set me free. God is going to work a miracle. I am called for this. This is what I'm meant for. And all the way up to where, boom, 2008 hit. I have no memory of what I'm here for. And all I got now is 10 years from 2008. Up to 2008, everything I touched turned to gold. Everything I did succeeded. I became a, from a youth pastor to um, selling millions and millions of dollars worth of polish and, and success, success out the door with uh, sales, the mo motorcycle, Harley-Davidson industry, traveled all over the world. By the time I'm 25, drop all of that, drop youth pastor, drop sales, and put all my effort into music. And within, within a year, playing concerts that people dream of playing next to people are the biggest rock bands there are like Metallica from the day now we got disturbed those guys as they got signed we take their place in in Chicago at the the very club that they were playing we came in and took their house job then played right along with them and 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 success success left the music industry went and started a uh, painting business. Never had done it in my entire life. Just went to Florida out of nowhere and decided to start a painting business. Within a year's time, had one of the most uh, successful painting businesses that was booked. I mean, I was making money like crap. Nine employees oh, like that. From that to asphalt maintenance. Just blessed, blessed, blessed. Living in a, when I had my car accident and just single now, I was married, new baby, 18 months old, five bedroom house, five bathrooms, a beautiful custom home that uh, my next door neighbor uh, had built. An orthopedic surgeon, folks. I was, by, I was in contract. That was my house. I bought it from him when I had my head on collision. That's how successful my life looked. And then overnight, my checking account full of money, never never paid a bill. That lost all, my mom thought I was messed up on drugs. Every time she come down, she kept coming down because she's concerned and worried about me after this accident. I was acting really off and weird. They just all thought I was on drugs again. Still to this day, it's hard for them not to say I was on drugs. Brain damaged. And look what God did. Look what God did. It's amazing. I went through all of that to be here today, to share this with you today. Someone 
needs to hear it. And someone needs to know it's for you. Believe in God. He's real. I, I, my life has experienced it. I didn't believe in God. I had no memories, no faith, no evidence of, of that there was a God. I thought every religious person was a, a wacko, fake, hypocritical, ignorant. I mean, I had all kinds of conclusions. And look where I'm at. Look what I'm doing. It's God. Buckle up, folks. God's ready to show himself uh, whether you're ready for it or not. Buckle up. I'm praying for some, every individual who has ever been in my life, in any period of my life, any time in my life, I've been praying for you. <clears throat> God's going to reach out and touch you. He's going to show himself to you. And I'm excited because when he does, you contact me. I'm getting those contacts. People just this week um, contacted me. I'm, I've, I've been praying it for about, we started about 120 days ago. Um, it's been part of my prayer life. And buckle up. Here he comes. God's real. And... Um, there's no argument over it. <clears throat> it's the best, it's the best, most uh, awesome thing that could ever happen. The truth is better than the lie. The lie is there is no God. There is, there is nothing but a bunch of fake religious folks that believe in stuff that they don't live. That's a lie. The truth is God is almighty. He sees all, he knows all, and he's got a mission. He's going to turn this whole entire world into repentance. He's got to pour out his, his spirit on all flesh. I'm glad I'm here for it. God bless you. God day.